it initiative uh, and having uh, such a wonderful uh, program uh, for both uh, IDCCM uh, trainees and IDCCM nurses, uh, wherein uh, they are pulling in uh, consultants from various uh, places throughout India and making them speak and teach uh, people who are at distant places. So it's a wonderful initiative. Uh, and I would uh, thank uh, IDCCM again uh, for uh, ISCCM again for giving us this opportunity. Uh, and as you all know, uh, chest X-ray is one of the basic uh, investigations uh, which is ordered for almost every patient in the hospital, uh, not just the ICU, at least at the time of admission, not may not be daily. Uh, so it is very important uh, to follow up the X-ray and to see uh, how the patient is progressing if the patient is admitted with a, a lung infection. Covering the entire chest X-ray uh, in probably uh, 45 minutes to one hour uh, is a very, very tedious task. So uh, myself and Dr. Vinay uh, have put our best of efforts and uh, try to make it as simple as possible. Uh, so, for the next uh, 30 minutes or so, uh, Dr. Vinay will take over and he will uh, discuss with you on the chest X-ray within a case scenario uh, based approach and in between uh, he will be asking you questions. Uh, you can uh, post the answers in the chat box because uh, I think you are supposed to talk only at the end. So, the answers can be posted in the chat box. Uh, it is more like an interactive session. Uh, otherwise, post-lunch session, uh, most of you will be dosing off. So, uh, without wasting much of time, I'll ask Vinay to take over. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Vinay Raj. I'm consultant in critical care at Global Hospital. So, I would like to thank ICCM for giving me this opportunity to be part of this academic session. So, I think as sir has already discussed how important chest X-ray is, like uh, for nurses and even for doctors. Uh, this is a very important investigation. We do like uh, for every patient who is on ventilator, we do X-ray every day. Uh, to start a feed, we need an X-ray confirmation of rise to. Uh, to start a dialysis, to confirm the position of the dialysis sheet, we need an X-ray. So like there are a lot of indications why we get a chest X-ray. There are a lot of emergencies. Uh, we'll confirm the diagnosis based on X-ray. So I think it's a very important topic for us to learn. So rather than a didactic uh, lecture, I would like to take you through a case discussion format. So I would uh, I would like everyone to participate actively and uh, please you can uh, write anything, even if it is a silly question, you can ask in the chat box. I'll try to answer. Uh, and at the end, we will uh, can have a discussion. So I'll start it now. Yes. Okay. So first we'll go through a first case vignette. There are basically two case vignettes uh, in this uh, presentation. The first one, the 60-year-old male who is diabetic, hypertensive, since 15 years. He was recently diagnosed as uh, uh, having a prostate carcinoma with extensive metastasis. Uh, he started on palliative chemotherapy recently. Now he has come to hospital ER with sudden onset breathlessness. Uh, checking his vitals, he is tachycardic, blood pressure is normal, and he is febrile. Saturation is around 95% of the room air. So this is his x -ray. So I want you to, I want you to see this X-ray and please tell me uh, what is abnormality seen in this X-ray? Is it uh, right-sided consolidation, pulmonary edema, or interstitial lung disease, or just a normal X-ray? So I would usually wait for five to ten seconds. Based on the chart answers, I will continue that. So look at the X-ray and you can tell me. Uh, someone has said ILD. Any other answers? A uh, few people have said it's a normal X-ray. I think I'll move forward. So yes, uh, most of them said it correctly. This is a normal chest X-ray. So before going in, uh, going to know about what are the abnormal X-rays, I feel we should know about normal X-ray. So, so if you see X-ray, basically there are two colors, white and black, and different shades of gray color. So uh, based on these color variations, we have to identify the structures and we have to identify normal and abnormal structures. So, we'll discuss from top to bottom, from left to right. Uh, 
uh, if you can see this, we'll start with trachea. So as trachea has air, uh, air is radiolucent, so it looks black. Then coming down, if you can see this white pointing things, these are vertebral sinus process. So basically, these are helpful to identify the midline of the uh, body. So midline of the chest X-ray can be identified with this spinous process. So if you continue this trachea, you will end here where the trachea bifurcates into right and left bronchus. So this point is called as carina. This is an important uh, landmark uh, to see for various position of the lines, rise to all those things we have to identify based on landmark. Yeah, carina. And just beside this carina, this is right hilum, and left side, this is left hilum. Uh, yeah, so always the left hilum is always uh, higher than the right hilum. If the right hilum is higher than the left hilum, it is always abnormal. Okay, remember that. And coming to second part, breathing. So we'll see at the lungs and lungs. So lungs, we'll see from bottom and from one lung to another lung. So here, if you can see uh, lung, when it is properly aerated, it will look black. The only structure which we can see white is pulmonary vasculature. Uh, these are the pulmonary vasculature markings which we can see in the lung feeds. Then comes the bones. So look at all the ribs. Then this is the clavicle which is S-shaped. And yeah, coming to diaphragm. So right hemi, uh, hemi diaphragm and left hemi diaphragm. So uh, it joins the ribcage is called costophrenic angle. The diaphragm which where it joins with the uh, heart is called as Costo cardiac angle. So look at these angles. These are the important landmarks. Just below the right hemidiaphragm, the liver will be there. And just below the left hemidiaphragm, spleen and stomach will be there. So we can see the stomach bubble beneath this left hemidiaphragm. Uh, then the last thing is look at everything else. You can see the soft tissues, uh, uh, like other joints, like uh, shoulder joints. And you can look for other lines, Riles tube, ET tube, ICDs, different lines we can see in this X ray. So, so, a sound knowledge of normal structures makes identification of abnormal structures easier. Now, we'll move to the same case scenario, the second question. So, the nurse has taken one more x-ray by mistake, and now this is a new x-ray. So, what is the difference between the previous x-ray and the new x-ray? So, is it AP view or PA view, or over penetration or under penetration, inspiratory versus expiratory filling, or is it rotated filling? I wait for the answers, then I'll continue. You can answer in the chat box. So moving forward. So this is basically the same patient's X-ray. One is AP view, another one is PA. Uh, so uh, there are basically three views. One is PA view. AP view, the third one is lateral view. In ICU, the most of the X-rays, like almost every X-ray will be AP view because it's not possible for an ICU patient to go to uh, CT console or an X-ray console to get an X-ray because PA will be, view will be an uh, erect X-ray and AP view will be most of the time it will be supine or sitting position X-ray. Uh, so difference between uh, AP view and PA view. So if you look at the clavicles, so AP view, the clavicles are seen just above the apex of the lung field. Whereas in the PA view, they will be over the lung fields. Uh, when you look at the scapula, usually PA view patients' uh, uh, scapula will not be obscuring the lung field. But in AP view, the lung fields, we can see the scapula border inside the lung field itself. And if you look at the ribs, the posterior ribs are prominent uh, in the PA view and the anterior ribs are better visible in the AP view. And as the heart is in the anterior part, when you take an AP view, there will be apparent cardiomegaly. So, so when, uh, like how do you get the PA view and APU? So there will be an X-ray beam and there will be filling. The patient will be in between these two. If the X-ray beam is going through posterior part of the body to the anterior part, it's called as PA view. If it is going from anterior part of the body to posterior part, it is called as AP view. And yeah, so the nurse has taken even one more X-ray now. There are two different X-rays for the same patient. So what is the difference between these two X-rays? The same options, so you can uh, similar options, AP view and PA view, over penetration, under penetration, inspiratory versus expiratory filling, or is it a rotated filling? Yeah. <clears throat> now look at the X-rays and you can tell me. 
uh, somebody has said inspiratory versus expiratory filling. Uh, other person has said AP and PA view. Yes, uh, we have already discussed about AP and PA view. Now we are discussing about a proper inspiratory film and expiratory. Film. They are basically inspiratory film and expiratory film. So uh, if you look at uh, these two X-rays, they are, the, both the X-rays are from the same patient. One is proper inspiratory filling, the second one is expiratory filling. So how to know which is inspiratory, which is expiratory? So you just have to count the ribs. So count the anterior ribs. If the end of sixth rib or fifth to seventh rib, if they are touching the diaphragm at the mid clavicular line, that is a proper expiratory. If the number is lesser than that, that would be an expiratory filling. So for the posterior ribs, it will be a, a, from the from eighth to tenth rib. Okay, uh, and uh, one more difference is usually in the proper inspiratory film, uh, the, uh, the heart size will be normal. In expiratory film, the heart size might look a little bigger than inspiratory film. And the third one, after AP view and uh, PA view, then inspiration and expression. The third most important thing is penetration of uh, X-ray. So it should be always a normal penetrated X-ray. If it is over penetrated, you will see complete blackness of the X-ray. If it is under penetrated, there will be more of whiteness. So how to know a proper uh, penetration of X-ray? Look at the heart and if, should, if you are able to see the vertebral body just visible, that is a normal penetration. If you, like, if you see the first image, the, like, uh, just uh, within the heart border, you are able to see a complete vertebra rather than just seeing the vertebra. So this is over penetrated. That's why the lung shadows are very, very black. And if you see the right side image, where you can't see the spinous process or the vertebra at all uh, from the heart uh, image. And if you see the X-ray lung part, so it is more whitened. So this is under penetrated. So both of them are not a proper quality of X-ray. And the fourth most important thing is rotation of the X-ray. This can be very common in an anterior AP view when we take in the ICUs. So how to identify whether the film is rotated or not, the most important landmark will be the spinous process of the vertebra. So look at the spinous process of the vertebra. So draw a vertical line from there and look at the medial ends of the clavicle. If they're equidistant, like the image which is in the left side, so that is normal film. If it is deviated to one side, that's a rotated film. If it is rotated to left, it is a left rotated film. So when there is a rotated film, you can't comment on the size of the heart, and there will be a lot of biases because of that rotation. So based on these four factors, we decide a quality of X-ray. Okay. So when you say a good quality X-ray, first naming of uh, patient details should be printed on the X-ray and this orientation of the, whether it is right side, left side, that has to be mentioned on the X-ray and then look for whether it is AP view or PA view. Then look for whether it is taken in a proper inspiration or expiration, or uh, look for whether it is rotated by looking at the spinous process and measuring from the medial end of the clavicles. And the most, and the last one is penetration, whether it is properly penetrated or under penetrated. And if you can see here, we can see we can just able to see the uh, vertebral bodies through the heart. So this is a properly taken X-ray, which is a good quality X-ray. Then. So we know how, which uh, X-ray is a good quality X-ray. Now we'll see a systematic approach, how to read an X-ray, which, uh, like, uh, which is more important and thereby we can identify. So when you are reading an X-ray, there are different ways of reading an X-ray. Like one method is A, B, C, D, E, which, is, which I have mentioned in the slide. And there are different other ways. People will start from center to periphery. People will start from left side to right side. So whichever is comfortable for you, you can go through that. So for our understanding, we just uh, mentioned this method, A, B, C, D. First one is airway. Second one is breathing and bones. C for cardiac and mediastinum. D for diaphragms. And everything else will come at the end. So first look at airway. Airway contains three important things. One is trachea, carina, and hilum. So right hilum and left hilum. So look at the trachea. Is there any narrowing? Is there any deviation to one side? That's important. Carina is the uh, end of the trachea where it divides into right bronchus and left main bronchus. So usually the angulation of the carina will be 60 to 100 degrees. Okay, if it is widened, probably because of left atrial enlargement or some lymph node mass that can result in a widening of the angle. And, uh, and look at right hilum and left hilum. So left hilum is always higher than the right hilum. 
then coming to breathing and bones now look at the lung fields look for any uh, change in the color like the, any whitening or any haziness um, or any too much of blackness these things should be seen in the lung fields and then look at the bones look at both clavicles look at the ribs especially in that road traffic accident we can see rib fractures or clavicle fractures and and then fourth one, uh, then third one is cardiac so <clears throat> right side uh, most of the hard water is formed by right atrium left side the most of the hard water is formed by left ventricle so just above the left ventricle this part is left atrial appendage just avoid uh, this is the pulmonary artery and above this this is aortic uh, knuckle so these are the structures which we can see in the heart and uh, and above the mediastinum uh, just avoid we can see the aortic arch trachea and various lymph nodes if they are enlarged they are visible they will be visible otherwise they will not be visible and coming to the fourth part diaphragm right hemi diaphragm and left hemi diaphragm and always right hemi diaphragm will be higher up than the left hemi diaphragm um, and below the right hemi diaphragm there will be liver and below the left hemi diaphragm there will be gastric bubble and spleen will be seen and everything else so so any other lines or any other pipes tubes everything can be seen after these things so this is a systematic approach which you can follow to read an x-ray now we we'll continue that case so in the er now the patient's sugars are checked and it is more than 600 patient is becoming more drowsy and we had done an abg which is showing high anionic gap metabolic acidosis and then bp started dropping so er physician has started fluid resuscitation uh, then they started even uh, noradrenaline uh, because of uh, worsening uh, bp and uh, becoming drowsy uh, to protect his airway he was intubated post intubation he was not maintaining saturation even with 100 percent of air then an x-ray is done this is the x-ray which is shown now look at this x-ray tell me what is the abnormality of this x-ray so i'll wait for the answers So, try to see like, uh, can you see the ET tube? Yes, someone has uh, answered properly, rightly. So, the left lung collapse, excellent. So, many people have answered this properly. So, right side. Yes, ET tube, this is basically an endobronchial intubation. Uh, if you can see the ET tube, ET tube has entered into the right bronchus. So, the only right uh, lung is being aerated, left lung is being collapsed. That's why this haziness is seen on that. So yes, most of you are right, collapsed left lung due to endobronchial intubation. Now, yes, what is the cause of desaturation? Uh, left lung collapse. And so what is a collapse? So, uh, insulator shift of bronchus and mediastinum. Generally, collapse will drag the trachea towards the same side. So, on the same side, because the lungs are not inflated, they, you can see the crowding of the ribs. Because there is no air in the lung, there will be loss of lung volume. Um, and the other side, to compensate it, it will become high, hyper inflated. And, and if you can see the bronchus also, here the right bronchus is continuous, but the left bronchus is cut, uh, will be cut off. And usually the pulmonary arteries will be dilated on the opposite side. And so, and you can't see the diaphragm here. So this is called a silhouette sign where the, the left hemi diaphragm is obscured because of the collapse. Moving forward to the next, uh, uh, next vignette. So now the tube position is being adjusted, the tube is pulled. Uh, saturation started improving uh, and just i wanted to mention this x-rays are not the same patient x-ray so we have taken different x-ray just for education part or just for discussion part uh, we have included all these x-rays so there may not be excess of the same patient so his saturation started improving uh, right subclavian line is placed as the patient is in hypotension so but after placing the line started on noradrenaline but his blood pressure started dropping further in spite of uh, vasopressors the pp is not maintained 
they have done in a lung ultrasound bedside it, it is not showing slide on the right side then they have done in chest x ray so this is an x ray which is done and yeah you can see the line which is in proper place the subclavian line started from here and it ended it uh, somewhere where on superior vena cava and what is the abnormality with this x ray so can you see any deep sulcal sign and the pleural effusion or meniscus sign and pneumothorax deep sulcus and pneumothorax and meniscus sign and pleural effusion so what is abnormality which is seen in this x ray so someone has said collapsed left lung right pneumothorax and someone said deep sulcus and pneumothorax deep sulcus and pneumothorax yes many have answered rightly yes so <clears throat> This is basically called as deep sulcal. When you look at the costophrenic angle, uh, usually we won't see this costophrenic angle so deep. This is called as deep sulcus, and usually it is uh, seen in a supine, uh, even in the supine film. Because generally for pneumothorax, you need an erect position. But uh, um, in AP view, we can get this deep sulcus in pneumothorax. And if you can closely observe, this is the border of the lung, which is just above this. And this is more black, and there are no pulmonary vasculature seen in this pneumothorax area. And what is meniscus sign? So meniscus sign is seen in pleural effusion. That will be semilunar uh, shaped sign, which is seen in that. So yes, most of you are right. Right sided pneumothorax. In fact, uh, if you leave this at this point, it can go into tension pneumothorax. Uh, so what is the difference between pneumothorax and a tension pneumothorax? So pneumothorax, the hemodynamics are probably stable, but in tension pneumothorax, the one side of the lung and heart will be pushed to the other side. Even the trachea will be pushed to the other side. That will cause uh, hemodynamic uh, compromise and it may lead to impending death also. That's a medical emergency where you have to treat it immediately. So yes, uh, as you have diagnosed it properly, uh, sorry, yes. After that, uh, yes, they have seen that. Uh, then they have uh, then patient immediately underwent some procedure in this X-ray. So what is the procedure which he has undergone? Options are uh, CVC insertion, pigtail insertion, needle thoracosynthesis, and ICD insertion. So you can answer in the chat box. Yes, I think everyone is so fast. So everyone answered it properly. Yes, ICD insertion. Uh, as this X-ray is not exactly the same patient's X-ray, just for understanding, we have taken this. And if you can, someone tell me, is there something wrong with this ICD? Yes, ICD is placed. That is, uh, that is the right answer. But uh, it would be nice if someone can say what is wrong with this uh, ICD. Yes, exactly. Many people have answered it properly. So you have to look for this radio opaque line. So if this radio opaque line discontinues, that's the opening of the ICD. And here the opening is properly insert, uh, inserted inside in the drawer space. But the another port, another opening which is outside the rib cage. So if this ICD needs to be repositioned, it has to be pushed inside. Okay. So look at the other lines. Yes, this patient has an, two different ICDs. I think this looks okay, and uh, this looks a little out. It needs to be positioned. In. And in general, pneumothorax, the ICD has to be directed towards upwards. And for pleural effusion, the ICD has to be directed towards downsides. And if you can look at for the other lines, there is another subclavian center line which is placed here. Okay, yes, right. Many people have answered it properly. Uh, now, little about lines and tubes in ICU. Yes, so there are various images. So, <clears throat> the first image, uh, this is an ET tube. So, if you can see the most important landmark when you see the right position of the ET tube is look at the carina. Okay, the right position of ET tube is three to four centimeters above the carina. So I think this is little down, probably it is still able to ventilate both the lungs, but the ideal position would be like slightly pulling it off by two to three centimeters. And if you look at this, this is center line. So if you look at the center line, center line has to be parallel to, uh, to the, uh, to the uh, superior vena cava. And the tip of the center line should be in the right atrium or ideally at the junction of superior vena cava, the right atrium. Even the dialysis sheet more or less similar. And whether the center line is in the right side or the left side, the tip has to be more or less in the subclavian. Uh, sorry, yeah, uh, SVC. And, and the right tube, uh, remember this, very important. 
because most of the time we'll look for the rise to position. So the landmarks which you should see is three things. One is carina, second one is diaphragm, third one is gastric bubble. Okay, make sure that rise to pass through the carina and pass through the diaphragm and the tip should be in the gastric fundus. So look for the tip of the rice tube in gastric bubble. So these are the three things which should be done. So if it goes into any bronchus, if you did not check it, that will unnecessarily in pneumonia later on because of the feet. And that's about it. And if you see the second image, uh, if you can answer me in the chat box, what is this? The yellow arrow mark which is showing to that, which is a uh, little radio opaque. What is that line? I think many could not answer it. Yeah. Uh, someone has said electrode. Mm, no. Port out. No. I can give you a hint. Usually, people who work in CTVS may identify this. Right, student? No. IABP. Very good. Someone has answered it. Yes. It is a tip of IABP detector. So, the ideal position is it is in IOTA. Yes. This is the right position. <coughs> And just below this, I think you are not able to see this. It will be like, uh, slightly radio loosened. The helium air will be injected into this catheter. Okay. If it is uh, below the aortic uh, knuckle, five to centimeters below it, that's a wrong position. So yes, many have answered it properly. Uh, and yes, if you can see the central venous catheter, uh, yes, this is not in right position. This is started from right jugular, but it has gone into left subclavian, even the pulmonary artery catheter has not entered into heart, it has gone to another position. So by this, you can identify the mal positions of the different lines. And what is the fourth image? What is a line which is placed in the fourth image? Very good. I think many have started answered it properly. Pacemaker. Yes. So this is a slide for different uh, lines and questions. So these are the different, on the left side, if you can see, these are the different lines which we usually see in the X-ray. Endotracheal tube, as I told you, the right, uh, the current position of the tip of the AT tube is three to four centimeters above the carina. And tracheostomy tube, so look at the stoma of the tracheostomy tube and look at the carina. Usually the tip should lies in between one half or two thirds of the distance from the stoma to carina. And central venous catheter, dialysis catheter, more or less it will be similar. The uh, tip should be parallel to SVC and the tip should be ideally in the lower part of SVC just before entering the RA. And sometimes if it, even if it enters the right atrium, it is fine. And pulmonary artery catheter, yes, it should never cross the left or right main block. This is an important thing which you should see. And ICD tubes. Uh, I think already we have discussed in different uh, in that uh, slide. So all the holes uh, for ICD should be inside the ribcage, not outside. And IABP, I think you have identified it properly. Uh, the right position is two to three centimeters lower than the left subclavian artery. And NG tube, as I told you, three important landmarks. One is carina. It should cross the carina and it should cross the diaphragm and the tip should be identified in the gastric bubble. And the continuation of this patient, yes, the patient was diagnosed to have a urinary tract infection. He received antibiotics. Gradually, he improved over the next five days and was discharged on day eight. So most of the issues or uh, problems which happened to him are hydrogenic, probably because of the lines or the tubes. So remember, uh, whenever we're doing a procedure, we should be very diligent and very careful in doing this. And X-ray has helped us in identifying most of the problem to solve all these things. Uh, coming to next case, a uh, 50 year old male patient, diabetic on oral hypoglycemic agents, hypertensive on beta blockers and calcium channel blockers. He is also a known case of dilated cardiomyopathy with severe left ventricular dysfunction. He is on digoxin and beta blockers. So now he has presented with fever since two days, cough since one day, and he is having SOB since morning. He had a recent travel history. Now his saturation is 85% in ER, which did not improve with oxygen. So, and obviously, whenever we see a desaturation of hypoxia, we will advise an X-ray or APG. So, we are advised an X-ray. And this is X-ray. Uh, tell me the diagnosis. 
pulmonary edema, right sided consolidation, pleural effusion, or interstitial lung disease. Someone has said it is pulmonary edema. Any other answers? Yes, I think everyone is very clear in spite of telling history of fever, SOP, everyone is saying pulmonary edema and someone has told that is a very good uh, CE bad wing sign. Excellent. Cardiomegaly. Very good. I think most of the features you already discussed. Yes, you, this is a pulmonary edema. So, there is a mnemonic to remember what are the findings which we can see in the X-ray. So, A, B, C, D, E. So, alveolar edema. Yes, many have answered it. Bad wing appearance. So, bilateral haziness, which is seen around the heart with cardiomegaly, will apparently look like a bad wing. And curly B lines, if you can see the pulmonary vasculature, they will be very prominent. And if you, even if you see in the upper lobes, in the, <coughs> uh, the vessels will be very prominent even in the upper lobes. And usually, they will be associated with bilateral pleural efficiency. Yes, this is pulmonary edema. Yeah, the same patient, uh, obviously, when we know that this is pulmonary edema, the patient was started on NIV diabetics. His shortness of breath has been reduced over a period. But he still required high supports on NIV. And he is still having fever spikes. His hemodynamics were borderline. So, WBC counts were increasing. Next day, chest x-ray was repeated. So, this is an x-ray, uh, which is a PA. Usually, we take an AP view. Just for understanding, we will put a different x-ray. But look at this and tell me. What is the finding? Someone had said an answer. Yeah, any other answers from others? Someone said right-sided consolidation. Many people have opted for pleural effusion. Yes, many people have said it right. It is right-sided pleural effusion. And I would take even right-sided consolidation is also a right answer. Basically, this is a case of a syndemonic effusion where there is a right-sided consolidation and effusion. So, obviously, when we see effusion with patients being symptomatic, we usually do some procedure. So, yes, patient has undergone a procedure. So, what is the procedure he has undergone? So, what kind of line we can see in this? I think everyone is answer, answer is right. It is a pigtail. You can see the tip of the tail, which is more like a pigtail. So, pigtail uh, generally for uh, Pleural efficiency, we do use pigtails in ICU. Even we can use the melicots or ICD for the same procedure. Sometimes if the effusion is very small, we can do a needle guided drainage also. Yes, now I think uh, X ray will be expanded once you put a pigtail or drain fluid. Then the same patient, uh, in spite of all these efforts, his hemodynamics was worsened and he required intubation. Fever spikes continued. He had thick secretions. Oxygenation was still poor. He's on stiff vasopressors on noradrenaline and vasopressin. X-ray is repeated on day five. Now the X-ray is like this. So what is wrong with this? Someone has said pulmonary edema. Any other answers? And whenever you see an X-ray, always remember. Uh, history is an important part when you read an X-ray. Without knowing history, just by looking at the X-ray, most of the time we will be wrong. But if you add the uh, history and then you look at the X-ray, you will come to a right diagnosis. In this patient, I have mentioned his fever spikes are persistent. He had thick secretions and oxygenation is poor. So, based on thick secretions, fever, yes, I would consider more of a right-sided consolidation. Yeah. So, this patient, uh, this is a right lower zone consolidation. If you can see how to read a consolidation and collapse, collapse, most of the part will be white. Consolidation, you can see a bronchopa. So, what happens is this alveoli will be full, filled up with fluid and the interstitium and even the bronchioles will be patent. So, you can see the black lines inside the whiteness. So, uh, uh, that's how you will see this. I think someone is asking why can't it be left pneumothorax? So, yes, probably you might be thinking that this could be a deep sulcal sign. If you closely observe this, you can see the pulmonary vasculature even this, even here. So, then why we had this shadow? For female patient, usually the breast shadow will be like this, and we may confuse with left pneumothorax. Okay. So, this is a right sided uh, consolidation, right sided uh, pneumonia. So, the treatment is antibiotic oxygenation. And 
So these are the two uh, case vignettes. So in spite of this, uh, all the efforts this patient could not be revived and he succumbed. Uh, <coughs> so like, uh, so these are the two case scenarios which we had discussed. Uh, we'll discuss few interesting uh, X-rays. Uh, so this is an X-ray. Um, Thirty-five-year-old male patient uh, came with history of aspiration pneumonia. On day five, his oxygenation is worsening, and X-ray is done. And this is the X-ray which is seen. And patient got intubated. And in spite of intubation, uh, he is requiring quite high oxygenation. So what is this X-ray finding show? Someone has answered it rightly. Yes. So bilateral haziness within a week of uh, insult and no cardiac problem for this patient. Uh, um, and his, as I told you, he's requiring high, very high oxygen recommended ventilator. So basically the PF ratios are very less. So all these things fit into definition of uh, class KRDS. So this is uh, ARDS patient. Um, the treatment is lung protective ventilation, and I think you know all the, all the like stepwise way of treating ARDS. So, uh, ventilatory supports, low tidal volume ventilation, high beep supports, and recruitment maneuvers like proning. And even if he is very sick, we can go for it. And yes, this is an ARDS patient. So, this is another patient, X ray, uh, who is a 70 year old. Uh, has come with a history of uh, fever since one week and weight loss since one month, decreased appetite, weakness, cough, and sometimes hemoptysis. And this is X ray, uh, like this is X ray we have done, so find the abnormalities. I said COPD, Bulle, Cox. Very good. So yes, uh, the features, history, and X-ray more in favor of a tuberculosis with bilateral cavity formation. Yes, someone has said it. Bullets. Yes, big bullets where there will be uh, no pulmonary vasculature, so that will not help in aeration. So they will have very high risk of spontaneous pneumothorax, especially when you keep them on positive pressure ventilation like intubation or NIV pressure control. They will be at risk of pneumothorax. Remember that. Okay. Yes. These are bilateral lung cavities, very big lung cavities. Uh, yes, this is another case. Um, who is 60 year old uh, patient? He has come with history of uh, cough since one week, uh, low grade fever, frequent hemoptysis, and difficulty in breathing. And this is an X ray they have done. Someone had said miliary TB, pulmonary hemorrhage, Kaposi sarcoma, pulmonary TB. So basically, these are extensive meds which are seen in bilateral X-rays. So the primary could be somewhere else. So the symptoms which he is telling is more in favor of elderly patient having those symptoms or more in favor of a carcinoma and multiple meds. So when the lesions are one or two, then it will be difficult. When the lesions are so many, uh, this is generally in favor of uh, metastasis. And someone has said uh, pulmonary TB. Usually TB, uh, the lesions will be limited to one lobe, especially right upper or left upper lobe, uh, upper zones. And, uh, um, and someone said pulmonary hemorrhage. So pulmonary, even pulmonary hemorrhage will be limited to one of the lobe in generally. And you can see more haziness limited to that particular lobe. And someone has said uh, miliary TB. Miliary TB, the hair, so haziness, if you see, they are like fine granules rather than uh, thick nodule kind of things. So this is more in favor of uh, chest, uh, lung metastasis. Uh, yes. So uh, this is a patient um, who has come with a history of uh, fever, cough, SOB since one week. And uh, if, if you can see, there is a lot of haziness in this. This is the which we have done. Now you can tell me what is the diagnosis. Someone has heard pulmonary TB. Yes, but anything specific? Emphysema. Uh, 
emphysema you see more of bronchiectatic changes in the lower lobes rather than this so these are like fine granule kind of things which are seen in the bilateral x rays which will be extensive in the both lungs so this is an x ray of miliary tp uh, if you can zoom it and see then you will identify the haziness will be like fine granules kind of thing and Uh, a, fe uh, a female patient has come, 35 year old. She has come to hospital for just for uh, routine checkup. And uh, in a part of routine checkup, she has got this uh, X-ray. Uh, do you find any abnormality in this X-ray? She is not uh, symptomatic at all. Uh, it is usually difficult to identify. So if you can see the haziness here, this is a solitary nodule. So this patient, if you take a biopsy from that, so it might come with uh, malignancy sometimes, okay? Probably the patient is in the early stage where she is not symptomatic. So we can diagnose early by looking at these kind of nodules. I think these are uh, about most of the X-ray. I think we have covered most of the common things which we have we see in ICUs. So my take home messages is always look for patient details because that can happen. Sometimes we'll read, if you don't see the patient name, age, or some details on the X-ray, we can misinterpret the patient findings. So see all the technical issues, whether the X-ray is taken in a proper AP view or inspiratory uh, film, or whether it is rotated or taken in a proper, uh, whether the penetration is adequate or not. And whenever you read uh, X-ray, have a systematic approach. So first look at the airway, trachea, carina and hilum, then breathing and bones, so lung fields and bones, then cardiac and mediastinum, then diaphragm and everything else. So look at for all the lines. So always have a systematic approach. So remember, this is not a lung, uh, this is not a lung extent, this is a chest extent. So don't just limit to the lungs, look at the other structures. So you'll have a soft tissues, you'll have muscles, bones, joints in the x-ray. You, you can look at the abdominal findings also sometimes if you see an uh, air under diaphragm, so that can be a finding which can be seen in uh, pneumoperitoneum or uh, perforation of any uh, intestinal structures. So, and always try to compare with the old films that will make your job very easy. So that way you can see the new finding very easily comparing with the old films. Every radiologist does that. So please do that comparing with the old films. Uh, if there is any doubt and you're not getting any diagnosis, so you can always think for a CT chest for a better image. Okay, thank you. So now I would take all the questions. So if there are any questions you can ask me, you can ask in the chat box or you can ask me directly. You can unmute your mics now. Uh, someone has said diaphragm is what uh, I think uh, probably the previous uh, X-ray. Uh, yes, uh, you might get confused with the COPD patient in this. So this looks okay. In a COPD patient, even the diaphragm will be even more flat. And uh, if you can count the ribs, there will be multiple ribs, uh, rib intercostal spaces. And uh, usually they will be symptomatic. A patient who is having a tubular chest uh, with multiple intercostal space and the flat diaphragms, uh, you can obviously look at the patient and you can say that this is a COPD patient or not. So any other questions, any other doubts, you can ask in the chat box, you can ask us directly. You can unmute your mics and ask directly if you are bored of timing. How to read inspiration versus expiration? You want to take that? Yes. I think that was answered. So basically, whenever you... you know, if you have to see, uh, you have to see anterior end. So I, oh, yeah. So I think I already discussed. So, so how to read an inspiration and expression. So look at the ribs. So posterior ribs will be horizontal, anterior ribs will be oblique. Okay. So look at the number of intercostal space or the number of the ribs which you can see about the diaphragm. So look at the mid-clavital line, whichever rib is touching the diaphragm, by that you can tell whether it is inspiratory or expiratory. So if you are counting the anterior ribs, if the fifth to seventh ribs are touching the midpoint of the diaphragm, that is a proper expiratory. 
If it is lesser than five, it is always an explanatory failure. And if you are counting the posterior ribs, which are horizontal, usually that will be easy to count because that will be more visible. So, in that scenario, eighth to tenth rib, if they are touching the diaphragm, that is an inspiratory failure. Okay. And uh, yeah, uh, yes, that's the most important thing. Usually, the diaphragm will be a little lower and flat in inspiration compared to expression. Frankly, there are multiple studies which were done previously which said that. We could, there, is there any diagnostic difference if you have an inspiratory or an expiratory film? So, plural effusion can be better visualized in an expiratory film. So, but all the literature clearly says that there is no difference in an inspiration or an expiratory film. So, the problem which we face is whenever we are doing for a stable patient on an OPD basis, we can ask the patient to have it to take a deep breath and hold, and then we can do a proper inspiratory film. But in the ICUs, whenever we are doing an AP view, the patients are already not really stable and getting a, a full inspiratory film will be a little tedious task. So clinically, it doesn't make any difference in your assessment of the X-ray, whether it is an inspiratory film or an expiratory film. But when you are, when you are comparing a series of X-rays in an ICU patient, you need to have this at the back of your mind because sometimes whenever uh, there is an expiratory film, you can mis mistake it as a collapse when you compare it with the previous day's X-ray. So that is the only difference uh, which we need to understand uh, when you are talking about an inspiratory or an expiratory film. And because if someone has asked it, so I'll ask you a question, if you can answer it, tell me. So most of the, like, uh, in textbooks, like most of the films should be taken in inspiration. Tell me uh, in which situation the expiratory film is better than an inspiratory film. Even though that usually will not help much, but if you go by textbook, so in which situation expiratory film is better than inspiratory film? Can someone answer? So the condition is uh, minimal spontaneous pneumothorax, where the pneumothorax. Uh, uh, the air which is accumulated is very minimal. If you take it in the expiratory film, you can identify the lung border and pneumothorax very easily in the expiration rather than the inspiration. But as Sir told, in practical, the, that will not help much. So any inspiration or expiration is fine. But it is so you should know that um, when you're comparing with an inspiratory film and expiratory film, you should not get confused. You should understand that yes, it is an expiratory film. I can expect little haziness in the lower part of the lungs. That's an important thing which you should understand. And rotation also, like uh, what I see is uh, people try to say that this is a cardiomegaly without seeing for rotation in the X-rays. So when you are commenting on uh, cardiomegaly, always that should not be a rotated film. So look at the medial ends of the clavicle and measure from the sinus processes. If it is equidistant, yes, you then you can say that is properly taken X-ray and now you can measure the cardiac size. Again, about the CT chest, the reason why uh, we wanted to stress on the CT is uh, we can miss a lot of uh, diagnosis on a chest X-ray. So uh, when your clinical uh, condition is not correlating with an X-ray findings, always go ahead and do a CT chest uh, because diagnosing any condition early would, would, would be always be preferable because outcomes change with early diagnosis. Any other questions? Like uh, even if it is silly, it's don't worry, please ask it. In fact, I should appreciate you guys. The answering was really good. I think uh, you got most of the X-rays correct. We wanted to keep it a little basic. Uh, probably we should have, hmm, we should we have, should have kept a little more difficult X-rays because uh, thinking that uh, it is a session for the nurses, we have kept the X-rays to be a little basic ones which can be diagnosed easily. Looking at your standards, next session probably we should go a little 
hard yeah uh, because we thought it's all uh, ic nurses so we have included most of the ic nurses which we commonly come across swati are you there swita i'm sorry yes sir so please tell me i'm projector here so if there are no further questions shall we close this yes, we can conclude yes sir pardon me we can conclude sir can uh, someone has asked a question i think sir can we differentiate uh, pulmonary effusion versus consolidation versus pneumothorax or almost their features are similar okay so yeah uh, two things are similar the third one is not similar so basically based on the color okay so pneumothorax will always be black okay pleural effusion and consolidation you will see a haziness or white color in that part so pneumothorax you should see two things that should be very black there will be no pulmonary vasculature and if you can see the lung border you can instantly identify whether it is a pneumothorax or not yes yes this is an x ray if you can look at this the right lower border this has become complete black black because there is only air no pulmonary vasculature no lung architecture so this is completely black this is pneumothorax and this is a border which you can see so this is a lung border this is pneumothorax coming back to your other question how to differentiate between collapse and consolidation so collapse oh sorry not collapse so pleural effusion and consolidation in fact collapse also these three things will be uh, uh, you can see the whitening of the lung part so if you see this image yes Uh, this is actually the meniscus sign where you can see a little a semi lunar shape of the pleural effusion so this is a pleural effusion uh, and another thing is blunting of costophrenic angles you can see the costophrenic angles on the left side but you can't see on the right side generally these suggest to of pleural effusions so generally they can have collapse consolidation and effusion all three together also we call it as syn pneumonic effusions and uh, to say whether it is consolidation or not you should see for any black lines inside the white haziness so if you see black uh, lines inside that it is called as air bronchus because the bronchioles will be still be patent even in consolidation collapse that will be completely collapse so you can see only whiteness even in collapse in uh, effusion but you can see a black lines in consolidation now how to differentiate between effusion and collapse so collapse will try to pull the trachea towards same side effusion will push the trachea to the other side okay that's how you can differentiate so just to add on uh, sajad i think it is it, it should be called pleural effusion not pulmonary effusion because the fluid accumulates in the pleural cavity so uh, most of the times like uh, dr vinay already told whenever you have a syn pneumonic effusion uh you may not be able to appreciate the consolidation properly so once you drain the fluid then you will be able to see the lung tissue properly and then you will be able to appreciate all the signs which dr vinay was talking about that it be an air bronchogram or a silhoud sign wherein your border will not be uh, seen and uh, here uh, usually uh, so what we call is whenever we have a pneumothorax it is called as the deep sulcus sign wherein the diaphragm will be deeper and seen more clearly and whenever it is a pleural effusion it is called as a meniscus sign wherein you will not be able to see the uh, diaphragm properly so these are the major differences so uh we shall close the session here uh at, uh, at the at, as a concluding remark uh, i should really appreciate uh, all the nurses who have participated uh, you are uh, you are already doing a good job uh, you were able to answer most of the questions so we just wanted to keep it an interactive session uh, that is the reason we put a lot of uh, questions in it uh but day in and day out always uh, check for the quality markers of the x ray check for the patient name and uh, compare it with the previous days x ray 
uh, once you do it on a uh, regular basis and when you are trying to correlate with the clinical manifestations of the patient i am sure uh, you will be able to uh, make the diagnosis even before the consultant uh, comes on the rounds see uh, for example if you have a patient with a pneumothorax uh, if you have diagnosed it early and early needle thoracosynthesis or an early icd uh, saves the patient's life so you guys are the ones who take care of the patient 24 into 7 with a little bit of knowledge you can make huge difference in the patient's outcomes so to saying again thank you rccm for providing this opportunity uh, for both of us any concluding remarks yeah thank you very much i think that's an active participation from uh, all the participants uh, i'm really happy to see an active participation from you so hope to part uh, I, i would like to participate more of these things and i i think i think sir has to already told you so we would try to upgrade ourselves so this time we would try to add some difficult things also because you people are reading and coming and thanks sir everyone is participating thank you stop share stop share thank you sir